بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm pharmacist Hussam from Messino First, I'd like to welcome all of you and thank you for attending this scientific webinar held by the Iraqi and Arabic Scientific Council of Cardiology and Scientific Committee of Interventional Cardiology Diploma in cooperation with SNES. Now, I leave the mic to Dr. Hassan Farhan, consultant interventional cardiologist, medical educator to open the webinar. Dr. Hassan, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Masa al khair al jamia. Ahlan wa sahlan bzumalana fi hada al multaqa, al academy multaqa al khamis lil qalb. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum. Saha wa salama wa laman ya rab jamia. Liom, we have very distinguished uh, topics and very distinguished uh, speaker and panelist. Uh, نمتعودين السيشن هذا يكون هو بيورلي اديوكيشنال سيشن نن بروموشنال اكتيفيتي شكر لشركه اسينو فور لوجيستيك سبورت حتى ما نطول علينا اليوم عليكم الموضوع اي ويل ليف ذا فلور فور الاستاذ الدكتور امجد المندلاوي دكتور امجد المندلاوي از كونسلتنت انترفينشنال كاردولوجيست He, he has wide experience with uh, rotational hypertrophy. Uh, Maybe he will be with Dr. Aram, and inshallah, enjoy the presentation. And Dr. Amjad, the floor is yours. So thank you for all of you. Thank you. Shukran, Mr. Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today's session is about uh, rotational atherectomy. As we know, rotational atherectomy is a technology that enables PCI for calcified coronary lesion. It works by the principle of differential cutting. It preferentially ablate the hard elastic, inelastic calcified plaque. In the last 30 years, this technology has evolved and its objectives has changed. Initially, the objective of rotational atherectomy was plaque depulking, and now it, it changed into plaque modification so that it allows for balloon dilatation to be followed by optimal stent expansion. This new concept has significantly led to improvement in procedural safety and reduced the rate of complication. Initially, some people thought that it was rational atherectomy. In fact, this was a mistake in the mistake. But I see that I see that retrogradely is a better announcement that it is rational atherectomy, that you have to use it wisely in a rational fashion. So whether it is rational atherectomy or rotational atherectomy, I think this is a good uh, thing. So without uh, due delay, uh, I present Dr. Aram Jamal Mirza. Uh, he's a, a well-known interventional cardiologist from Slimani Cardiac Center from Soleimania uh, to present his lecture about uh, rotational atherectomy. Uh, if anybody ask, have questions, you can type in uh, in the field of uh, Q&A and uh, later on, uh, we'll uh, hope to make some interactive session between uh, Aram, me, and you. Uh, so the floor is for Dr. Aram Merza. Thank you very much, Dr. Amjad. Ladies and gentlemen, dear uh, my colleague and friends, good evening. Actually, it is a privilege to me to be with you this evening. And before I'm going to deliver my talk, I would like to thank Dr. Hassan Farhan, Dr. Falah Al-Azawi, and as you know, Pharma AG, uh, for making this event to happen. This evening, we are going to talk about a technology which mentioned by Dr. Amjad. It is the rational having changed in the past. Just 40 years ago, rotational effectomy or rotablator have been invented by this American guy whose name is David Oath. This device have been invented just designed to work on the principle of the differential cutting. So it's the only 
benefit of the of the of the of this technology is to make the procedure to be easy. Just it is for lesion preparation and plug modification to be followed by balloon dilatation and good stand position. As mentioned by Dr. Ramjet, the mechanism mechanism of rotational tractor is that it's act by principle of the differential catching. By differential catching, we mean that it will affect only the inelastic calcified plugs, while the elastic tissue is able to deflect out the weight. So whenever it's touching the inelastic tissue, the elastic tissue beneath the rotator the burr will be deflected away, while the hard calcified lesion cannot do that and it will be ablated. So this is the mechanism of action of, of, of rotablation. So it is differential cutting. Nowadays, we know that in the last two years, a new device have been introduced through the CE, CE Mark have been done, approved by CE Mark team, which is shock peak wave lethal therapy. Actually, this device is very good. It is very easy to be used as compared to the to the to the to the rotablator. But I don't think that it is available yet in the in the in the our country. It is easy to use. The, the mechanism of action of this new device is totally different because it will act by creating controlled sonic pressure that will disrupt the heart tissue. So it make only the crack. It is, it's by sonic pre pressure. It will make a crack in the calcified area, making a crack. It make a crack in the calcified area to be followed by, by balloon dilatation and by, by, by stenting. I hope that in the next, in the early future, this device will be available in, in our country. Just to know the parts of the rotablator, I'm sure that a lot of people, especially John and doctor, they don't have a chance to, to work in the cat lab that dedicated with the rotablator. Just, I will try to be, to talk very, very easily about the, the component and how to implement in your cat lab. The component, you have got four components, the major component of the rotablator. The first one is the burr. The burr is, Composed that it's a diamond coated tip of the rotor. The second part is the advancer. The third one is the console, which is the hardware of the, of the device, and the rotor wire. So these are the main four parts of the, of the rotor blade or the system. And of course, we have got a gas tank and we have got a full switch. Why I have put in the full switch? Because in the new version of the of the rotor blader, now it's there is no more plate for foot switch. It's only by hand. It's work you are, so it's easy. You are working with your hand, and there is no more switch in the new version of the rotor blader. The the rotor burr. So this is the burr that we are going to introduce it to the coronary. It is elliptical nickel coated brass attached to the flexible. This is flexible area flexible uh, drive shaft. This drive shaft is cut with the Teflon sheath to prevent injury to the proximal artery, to the proximal part of the lesion before the lesion. For instance, if there is a lesion here, this drive shaft, this Teflon will protect the proximal part. Meanwhile, it will allow the flush of the saline to be coming here. Later on, we are talking about this flush. So this is the Bear catheter. Regarding the bear, we have got different sizes. We have got starting from 125 to 2.5. It is the size is different and the guide catheter. For instance, for 1.25 or 1.5 millimeter, six French catheter is enough. 175 millimeter bear, seven French, and two is eight. To be honest with you, about 90% till now, we are do, doing more than a lot of cases. Vast majority, I can say you more than 95% of the cases can be done within 1.5 and 125. Uh, there are a few cases that need 175 or two millimeter because the size of the, of the burr, that the ratio of the burr to the visual size should be 0.5, 0.6 to one. It's unlike shock wave lithotripsy. In shock wave lithotripsy, the size of the balloon should be the same one to one to the size of the RC. Well, in rotablator, the size of the burr should be 0.5 to 0.6 to one. So for instance, if your vessel is three millimeter, so at that time 1.5 burr is fair enough to do the job. If your vessel is one 2.5, at that time 
125 millimeter burr is fair enough to do the job. And how I like that. If you have a vessel with four millimeter, you have a, Dr. Amjad, can you hear me? Yes, okay, you yeah. are very good. Okay. Yeah, if, if you have a vessel of four millimeter at the time, we should choose two millimeter burr. So this is according. So for those birds, 125 or 1.5, the gate cutter is six. So vast majority of all patients were doing them from radial artery through the sheath of the guide catheter of six French. So from guide catheter six French, these case can be done translatedly with the use of six French guide catheter. And, and so 175 need a seven French guide catheter and 2.5, however, I haven't seen this book. We have up to two, it needs sheath up to 10. Possibly this is for peripheral vessel or I don't know, special cases. The second part of the, the second main part of the, of, the, of, the, of the system is the advancer. This advancer have a lot of port. One port is the fiber optic cable, which will be attached to the, to the, to the console. The second part is the infusion saline. This is for attached to the pressurized saline just for flushing because this saline later will act as a cooling system because this rotavulator need a cooling system because we know that it is it will run about 180,000 round per, per second. So imagine the amount of the heat that will be produced by the by the by, by the, the device. So that's why it should be attached to the to the saline. The other part is the draft shaft connector. We have got the advancer knob and we have got the brake deflate button. Other part is a console. The console is the hardware of the is the hardware of the of the of the rotablator because all parts will be attached to this console. I don't want to go to the detail, and that's the pedal part, the pedal foot switch will be attached to it to the back slide. But in the new version, as I said, this is only done by hand. It is manual. The fourth part of the of the of the rotor system is as power. These are special dedicated wires. The, the shaft of these wire it's 0.009 millimeter, the same as filter XT. If I, I, I'm sure that a lot of our doctors are using filter XT, especially for crossing collaterals and CTO people, patient chronic total occlusion. So this wire is reverse to other wires. The tip is 0.014. 0.014, while the shaft is 0.009. So it's a very delicate, it has a special sensation. I remember first why I did my first case with the Dr. Amjad because he taught me how to do it. He said to me, Aram, come and feel, feeling, how was your feeling with this wire? It's a special feeling because it's specially designed for this purpose. And we have got two main type. It's only the, we have floppy wire, and we have got extra support. The floppy wire we are using for vast majority, we are using the floppy wire, while the extra support is using for those patients who have got a very heavily calcified, heavily calcified vessel we are using for them. So the second part, the, this is the other part, which is the rotor wire. There are some fundamental elements. So these are the major parts of the Atherectomy system. So there are some fundamental elements that you need it for optimizing your procedure. These should be kept in mind. These are the ABCD or ABC of the of the rotational atherectomy. The first one is the burr. The size of a burr to the artery should be 0.5, 0.621. To me personally, I am all the time using a bit smaller rather than to be bigger because to avoid complication. The speed should be fixed between 140,000 to 180,000 round per second. So imagine how it is speed, the speed of the rotation. So this, this, this burr should rotate about 140,000 to 180,000 per second. One of the important points, the most important point in, in, in making rotablator is to have pecking motion. By pecking motion, we mean well, Arabi nakar, nakar. It should like movement like that. You should go and back just like a monotonic. No, you should have a pecking 
packing motion. This is very important because with packing motion, you are avoiding one of the most disastrous complication with is the bar stacking of the, of the bed. Another important point is that the runs should be short. It should be more than 15 to 20 seconds. I am never go behind 50 seconds. And all the time, you should ask your assistant to calculate when you are reaching to be with you. He say to you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, 15. All the time, your assistant is reminding you, he's calculating the time that you are making. Runs. So do not be more than 20, because if we go runs more than 20 seconds, at that time, we have got more incidence of complication in the form of the bradycardia, hypotension, and slow flow. And actually, it's mentioned that it's better to have final pollution run. In vast majority of cases, we are not going to have one or two. Sometime we are going to have uh, several times just going in the coming back to the guide and going back to the lesion, because as mentioned by Dr. Amjad, this is debulking. We are going to make mo plug modification. It's not only debulking, it's plug modification. That's why these cases need final polishing run. Just how you start implementing the, the, the it's not a program, just bringing the, 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 the rotabulator to a cath lab. Unfortunately, because of this bad economic crisis, but I don't know if bad, a political crisis that we live in Iraq from, from northern part from Kurdistan to the most, the 2000 part of Iraq. I'm sure that vast majority of the center for the time being, they don't have rotablator. And if it is available, it is, the, 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 the bird is not available, the, the, the gas tank is not available. I don't know, a lot of things we know with that we have got a lot of problem. So to start with, you should have enthusiasm. You should have enthusiasm to start to do rotablator because before the lecture, before this presentation, we were talking with Dr. Amja and Dr. Hassan. We see that we nowadays there are a lot of cases with calcified lesion. Actually, you need a good mentor, a good proctor and good mentor. I will never forget the, 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 my mentor, Dr. Amja Mandelari. When I phoned him just three years ago, I told him, please, I brought a rotablator. I want you to learn me how to start. Thankfully, he came and he came and we, we did several cases. And actually he is a good, fantastic proctor and mentor. And you should have a good cases. Please select the cases. For to start with the rotablator in a cath lab, you should select cases not to bring a difficult cases that have got very calcified. There are some cases that have got a spot of calcification, or we can say concentric. It's, it's a concentric calcification, not circumferential calcification, only in the in the roof or in the bottom of the vessel to start. And personally, I found that the complication with rotablator is much more with right coronary artery and obtuse marginal. It's, it's, it's less with LED. So if anybody is have a wish of have enthusiasm to, 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 to start with the later, I advise him to call Dr. Amjad, to phone him. Dr. Amjad, I have got the, I have brought the a device. Please come with me and learn me and teach me how to start it. And you should have at cases that are easy for in the, in the first, in the first 10 or 50 case just to improve your learning curve. Just simply to, 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 to tell you, and even Dr. Amjad can help me in these videos, just to prepare your system. This is the, 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 the gas tank. The gas, gas tank is attached to the, this special uh, instrument. And this is a simple a, a one valve way, one valve valve. This the gas is attached to the to the to the console. As we say, the console is the is the is the uh, hardware of the of the machine. And at least the gas tank should have about should have at least 500 psi, and at least about 90 to 110 psi should be delivered to the system through the the, the special port should be delivered to the system. Later on, we are going to attach this to the, to the console. After that, 
This is erotoglyte. Erotoglyte is a type of, of like, it's act as a lubricant. It's a contain olive oil and a lot of material. Personally, to be honest with you, we don't have in our cat lab. I haven't used it. But if it is available, it's better because it is recommended to have it. You will mix one bottle to one liter of normal saline. Just will ease your action because it is act as a lubricant. Later on, after preparing the, the, the gas tank and the console, we are going to take the wire. We are going to, as we said, we have got two type of wire. We have got the rotor, the flopia and extra support. After crossing the wire to the, to the lesion, we are going to attach the advancer to the console, which is the hardware of the, of the machine. This is this port is 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 for the for the for the uh, gas tank. This will be attached to the console and from the console to the gas tank because it will bring the gas there. And this is for the saline infusion because this saline should be available all the time, all the procedure, and we should pressurize the saline. It should be pressure. We should make a pressure up to two hundred millimeter mercury. Because imagine we see that this device is, is going to rotate about 180,000 uh, runs in the second. So imagine the amount of the heat that will be produced by this device. So that's why we need continuously, we need a saline infusion. That's why we are going to inflate the bag with the silicone manometer cuff on anything. There are dedicated cuff for that up to 200 millimeter mercury just to make the, the saline under pressure. So till here we are good. We are going. This is the saline. The saline infusion is coming back, coming from this from the uh, bottle. It should be on all during the procedure, because this is the only heating. It is the cooling system. We can say the cooling system of the device. And later on, after that, we are going to put the steel the steering in the back to the wire. So now everything is ready. Now is everything ready? And we are going again to change, to check the, 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 the gas tank. Because if we have a, got a leak in the gas tank, later on there will be some problem happen. And I will give you later on an example of my complication that happened with the leak in the gas tank. So now everything is ready. We connect everything. We have got for connection. We connect the, the gas tank to the console, from console to the advancer. And now we are ready. Here, we are going to cross in the wire to the lesion. And after crossing the wire to the lesion, sorry for that. Now, we are, before we start, this is a very important act. Uh, economies is very important. All, all the time, please remember economies drill. Before start, I remember that day that Dr. Amjad told me, he said, Ara, never forget drill. Drill is to test or prepare. Or at that time, you will make a double check that everything is ready. We know that we have arranged everything. Now everything is ready. Can you hear me, Dr. Amjad? Yes, very good. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Go on. Uh, now everything is ready. We have prepared everything. Uh, the gas tank is attached to the console, from the console to the advancer, and now we're working on the patient. No, no, never forget. Anybody is working on rotor blader, he should put his in mind draw. Draw is the economies of what? Of three or four things. The first one is, sorry for that. The first one, is D is for draw. D is for drip. So look to the drip. This is a drip because as we say, this drip is the heat cooling system of the device. It should be available unless you are facing a lot of problems. So the first D is for drip. Now we have a drip, we are sure. The second R for rotation. We should test our device in two modes, in rotation, and in dynamo, in rotation, we should make the rotation between 160 to 180,000. All the time, we are going to keep it between 160 up to 1,000, unless the rotation will not be too much to make the, 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 to make the 
uh, rotation in the, in, the, in the perfect way. Just we are missing one slide, sorry here. Sorry for that. This is for, we see that this is dripping off the, the drip. After that, we are going to a blot, back lot the, the, the catheter on the wire. So when we are back loading the catheter on the wire, we are going to lock. The third one is to lock the, the, the wire. A for advancer and W is for the wire. So all the time, remember draw. A, the economies of draw. Draw is for drip. R for rotation. We should, we should test that rotation and we make it on between 160 to 80,000. And later, advancement, advancer and the wire, we should, we should put the wire in its park, parking area. So draw. Well, that's why I'm making it three times because it's very important. Drip rotation, advancement, and wire. So let's repeat that. This is the, 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 the dripping of the normal cell line. This is the cooling system. This is rotation because we are going to test. There is a very important point here. When we are going to rotate on the table, please be careful. Do not touch any goes or, or any goes or your glove because it will be damaged. And later we are going to uh, make our rotational speed between 160 to 180,000. Later, the advancer, we are going to move it freely to see what is moved. And we are going to make it in the parking position about one centimeter or one inch away from the back side. And this is to be, we are putting a steering on the wire to be sure that everything is ready. Now, everything is ready. Just remember, everything is ready. We prepare the, the, the device, we have made the drip, we test all the drip, and now we are on the on the plane just to start. And this is just to, to, to make the mode because this is, we have a dynamo and we have got uh, uh, a therectomy mode. For the going inside, for going inside, when because sometimes, especially if the if the guide catheter is six millimeter, six French, sorry, six French, and the a device and the burr is one five millimeter. At that time, we may face some problem in advancing the burr inside the guide cut, especially in the curve in the aortic coming down. So at, at that time, we are using dynamo. The dynamo is rotation at a very uh, lower uh, speed is one sixty. It's sixty thousand. Sixty thousand. So let's see. One K. Do you have any comment about the preparation, Dr. Amjad? Uh, yeah, the preparation is uh, excellent. Uh, uh, just uh, a reminder by Dr. Sahib Zahir that uh, uh, the, the rotation is per minute, not per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. It's, yeah, yeah, it's per minute, sorry. It's per minute, not per second. That's, okay. that's right. <laughs> yeah. Just to make it, because the subject is new for some, some of our colleagues, so I've put four cases just to make a bit it interesting. This is a angiography for a patient who is about 82 years. I remember we did this case just two, three years ago. If we look to the angio, sorry, sorry, sorry. If we look to the angio, he has got, uh, uh, he has got history of CABG just several years ago. If we look to the, uh, the SVG graph to the obtuse margin is patent. The LAD is heavily calcified. I have looked to the ostal left main stem, it's diseased. If, if you have, if you see the left main stem, it's diseased. But the problem with the mid part of the LAD, which is heavily calcified area, if we look to the calcification, it is. And the patient, I remember, was symptomatic. Look how the amount of the calisomes here. And look to the inside, to the, to the lemur, which totally occluded at that time. We decide because the patient and the surgeon were reluctant to do the redo bypass surgery at the time with the rotablator. I remember that it was a bar 1.5, but at that time I am using seven French guide cutter. One important tip and tricks in doing rotablator, you should see the ostium of the of the of the of the guide of the, the guide catheter, the tip of the guide catheter and the tip of the wire. Because this wire is behave like a bad man. It's crazy wire. 
you cannot find it if you don't care about it. You will find your wire is going to the RCA, going anywhere. I don't know, but you should be very careful. And why I brought this page, this case to you, because if you look to the my guide, it's not well fixed. It's not well hooked. It's not hooked to the left master. So please, after these cases, when I am doing, I'm never using I'm, I'm Jodkin, Jodkin catheter. All the time, I'm using extra backup support because you need a good support. So that's, what's why I, that's why I I brought this case to present you that this is some mistake that happened because if you look during a rotational, during a therectomy, if you look, the guide will go outside and it's not, not, not fixed. So that's why all the time, but in this case, as long as we have got this left ostium of the left mainstem have a critical lesion, so at that time we cannot have a guide like extra backup to be deep seated because of the ostium of the left mainstem. And this is the mid part. We show that after balloon dilatation and stenting, and stenting for the left mainstem and finished by pot, and this is the final result. One of the important points regarding this wire, the wire of the rotablator, you can finish your cases on it. I mean that after doing a rotablation, you can keep the wire there and you can do ballooning and, and stenting, but it will not give you a good sensation. I could not give you a good feeling because it's very soft. Sometimes as you are dealing with the calcified lesion, you need a support. Personally, I am going to change the wire. I'll keep the rotor wire there and taking another uh, 0.014 wire like Whisper or Pilot going there and we're throwing the, the, the rotor wire. So all the time, please do not forget economies of draw, drip, rotation, advancer, and the wire. Because if you miss one checking or double checking one of these elements, definitely you are going to have some unwanted complication that can be prevented just by remembering these accounts. As, we, as mentioned by Dr. Amjad from the beginning of the presentation, he said that this rotablation, this system will not affect the future TRR or resinos. no. All the trial also have found that there are more than 16 trial about involving around 1000 patients, all of them showing that Rotor rotational atherectomy will not improve the long-term clinical results. And it have more complication with higher rate of success, but it has a higher rate of success. So the only rationale or the reason for using rotablator, it will increase your rate of success on, ex on experience on complication, on experience on radiation, and I don't know on the cost, because I don't think if you have got a bulk of patient, definitely it will cost, it will be costly. But also do not forget all of us, I'm sure that we have faced a patient, the patients, not only one patient, that we have got several, use several balloons without any benefit. But it will, a rotablator will add some cost, will not affect any future TRR or resinosis but it will increase the success of your procedure. And these are the example of all the trial, airbag, cobra, jar, etc. all of them, no, no trial have shown that rotabulator is, is superior to the plain balloon and jump in, in stenting in the chair of the future TLR. This example of another patient that just done last week, uh, this is 79 years old man, He's not diabetic. He's heavy chronic smoker with severe COPD. He's symptomatic with a uh, clot 3, 3 to 4 angina. Actually, the patient and even the surgeon was reluctant to do to do CABG. Look to the black big burden of the of the of the calcification. Again, why I brought this patient? This is not the ideal case for doing a rotational attraction because if you look here, I don't know whether my pointer is clear. You have got a very circumferential calcification. This circumferential calcification definitely, even if you are going to do debulking, it will, there is amount of the, of the count of, of, of calcium, calcium will remain there in the vessel, definitely no way. That's making your vessel not to be expandable. But that's why it's not a good choice to start with because you have put a very big burden of calcified issue. But the patient, to be honest, 
was very symptomatic in spite of uh, maximum medical treatment. He has got this diagonal subtotal, and you can see that LED is a very tight lesion. Just now we should use the extra backup. You should hook the, the, the left main stem in the perfect way, unless we may face some dissection in the ostium of the, of the, left, stem, of the, of the, of the left main stem, if the guide is not well seated. This is the pickling motion. This is the pickling motion of the of the of the rotulator. Just you should you shouldn't be so fast. You shouldn't be one go and come slowly. No, you should have a pickling portion, especially in the beginning, when you are going to crack or we are going to do a threctomy for the proximal part. And all the time you should go behind the calcified spot. If you look here, we have got calcification till the mid part of the artery, and just after that, it is. Some, some, it is a very nice feeling that after that, you think that any balloon cannot cross. But when I'm doing rotabulation, I just you are going to take a balloon three, 2.5 NC balloon, it will be inflated very nicely just after this debulking. And this is followed by normal procedure, making a, a mini crush technique and later to be followed by kissing and pot. And this is the final result of the patient. So this cases, it will be done only it will increase your procedural success. It will never affect the future TLI. But imagine that if you have a patient with that, if we don't have rotabulator, you cannot do anything for that patient. Definitely the procedure will be fraught. So where is the position of the, of the, of the rotabulator in the guidelines? This American guideline dates back to 10 years, year, 10, 10 years ago. At that time, it, it is still according to American guidelines, class two indication. So it's, it's, it is, it's indicated for fibrotic or heavily calcified lesion that might not be crossed by balloon catcher, uh, balloon catcher adequate dilatation before the stain implantation. The level of evidence is C. It's not recommended, it's, it's not benefit, or it might be harmful for those patients with routinely with de novo lesion or instant resinosis. But, this is per the guideline, but nowadays there are some studies. I think that there is some trial is ongoing on, on doing rotablator for instant resonance by making a special technique. It's not going to ablate, just it's going to have special movement. It's not fixed, it's not in the guideline, but there are some studies. This is the European guideline. In the European guideline, it is class 1C. It's class 1, indication with the level of evidence of C. It should be used in the hospital with heavy calcified or severely fibrotic lesion that cannot be crossed by a balloon or adequately dilated. So we say that the guidelines also mentioned that it is, is, is class A indication for only calcified lesion. So imagine you have got a heavy calcified lesion, but what are the factors that make you to stop and also you can say it's going to make you to not do calcic uh, rotablation at the The first one, if the, if the lesion is not crossed by the guide wire, this is a very, very important thing. Sometimes the, the, the lesion is subtotally occluded or it is totally occluded and it cannot be never crossed with the wire of rotablator because we see that the wire of the rotablator is very soft wire, is designed just to cross like very soft wire, it will never navigate the very, very tight lesion. So at that time, what is the policy or the trick? At that time, we are going to cross the lesion with coronary guide cat wire, like anything, pilot 50, whisper. Later, we are going to exchange this through the micro catheter with rotor wire. So what I want to say is that if you have got the lesion that you think that you cannot cross it with the rotor wire, we are going to take the traditional uh, PCI wire. We are going, it should be exchange wire 300. We are going to take micro catheter inside and changing the, the guide, the rotor wire through the micro catheter. So if you cannot cross the wire, rotor blader definitely cannot be done. If you have got only one vessel, if, if, if for instance, if you have got the LED, we have LED tight lesions, the circumflex is totally occluded, the right coronary artery is occluded. Only you have got LED, anything that you need a rotablator. So because we knew that the, the complicated
application of tabulator is more than the traditional PCI. So it's, it's well known that if you have got the last remaining vessel plus plus, do not go with rotablator. If you have got severe alveolar dysfunction, do not do it. If you have got SVG, because you know that in SVG is definitely after a few years, there will be a lot of degeneration and we are going to make, make a rotablation. It may cause definitely non-reflow. However, there are some literature talking about some uh, cases or case studies that they did SVG rotablation for SVGs, but I think that the size of the of the of the of the of the burr was so small to the size of the veins of the of the grafted vein. Thrombus definitely when you have got thrombus, you shouldn't go. You should do rotablator, and you have got the section of the treatment of the of the, of the, of the section type. For instance, if you have got a patient, if they refer to your patient, they have tried another center with, with, with balloon dilatation and you have got dissection. You should wait at least six to eight weeks for the dissection to cure. Or sometime when we are going to do PCI, but for before ablation, sometime because the burr cannot cross down, we are going to be, make a bit dilatation. If you are going to do balloon dilatation and your balloon cause dissection, you should never try rotablation because it is hardly completely contraindicated to do a thyroctomy or rotational rotation rotational on the dissected vessel. We have got a long, long list of complications. This is the most important part of the presentation, but definitely I don't be to, 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 to be the presentation to be boring. I will try to cover some of them because some of them like burn entrapment need a lot of technique. If we're going to talk about them, we need two, three lectures, but I will try to cover just simply the, 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 the important point in, 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 in dealing with the complication. The most challenging one is slow flow and reflow. All of us, I am sure that all the audience here in this, in this meeting, we, we are doing on daily basis or weekly basis primary PCI. And we are facing a lot of, uh, we are facing cases of slow flow and memory flow, especially in dealing with the right coronary artery. This is the most challenging one. Slow flow and non reflow, non reflow is the most challenging. The incidence is may reach to 8% of the cases. So imagine that if you are doing 12 cases of rotational atherectomy, according to the literature, you have got one cases, which means that one per 15 or 20 cases that you will get this, this problem. Then this will happen. Actually, the majority of the microparticles that have been ablated by rotational atherectomy, they will be ablated to particles less than 100 micron in diameter. And definitely, these are smaller than the mature erythrocyte, and they will be taken by reticular endothelial system. But there are in some situations that we are, it relates to the technique that it might lead to the slow flow and reflow. For instance, if we are going to do a lot of lesion debridement, because we say that we are going to have a packing, packing movement, and we are not going to be going more than 15 seconds. And we are going to go three to four rounds. If we see after that, we, see, we think that it's good. We are not going to do a lot, a lot of rounds because making a lot of debris, making a lot of injuries and making a lot, producing a lot of heat in epithelium, definitely it might lead to a complication. Another point is poor perfusion pressure. This means that any patient who have got a low blood pressure for instance, I am personally, I'm not going to do rotablator in any patient if the blood pressure is below 100, because I knew that from our experience and experience from the literature, hypotension is very risky. When you have got hypotension in these people, it's very, very difficult to get back the patient to the, to the, to the reality or to the well, a lot of these people will go to die. And sometimes you have got thrombus because do not forget doing a lot of, of maneuver on the table, preparing the, the, the advanced aid, the advanced preparing the set. Possibly at that time you may have some clot and thrombus and you again, or sometimes the thrombus is available, present inside the vessel. 
That's why we say that the presence of the thrombus is contraindication for additional extractome. So these are the main three causes, either the presence of the thrombus, hypotension, or excessive lesion debridement. There are some measures that can be taken to prevent slow flow and run for neural flow, like blood pressure, you should have a good blood pressure, never do rotablature in a patient, hypotensive patient. Frequent use of vasodilator. Actually, I, I'm not using a lot, but it's better to use whatever is available, is uh, any, anything of vasodilator available in your cat lab, is better to use frequently. It's a very important to limit the duration of birth, because we say that it is better not to exceed 50 15 seconds, because if you are going to exceed 15 seconds, possibly you are going to, to promote slow flow and low flow. And the most important thing is that is the packing like motion during the bar advancement. We say we say that packing it means it should have a packing like movement. You should go slowly and come back slowly, go slowly. No, you should have a packing movement. These measures might protect you to have a complication in the form of slow flow and non reflow Another, another, another complication is the same is heart work and hypotension. I think that it is the same as uh, non reflow and uh, slow flow. And, the, and, the, and the, just, just a few years ago, when making a rotablator on the right system or in the left system, they were preferring using temporary pacemaker. But nowadays, this, this, they have been fade away. Now, even for making a rotablator for left mainstream, left mainstream, right coronary artery, there are no more use of, 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 of uh, temporary pacemaker because they have found that even temporary pacemaker will not improve the hypotension if it happens, but it will increase the excess side complication. So the treatment is the same, and you have got the powers of inotropin, of atropine, it might be helpful. Just to show you another case, this is an example of another case, that I have used temporary pacemaker because the patient have got left main stem lesion. If you look here, we have got this left main stem lesion. However, the left main stem is not heavily calcified as compared to the middle AD. The middle LAD is heavily calcified. At that time, the tradition was to put a temporary pacemaker. If you have a case of, of a left main stem, or if you have got dealing with the right coronary artery, but this is not more in the clinical use. This, I brought this case just to show you an example. And this is the way that I have told you that sometimes it's very difficult to, 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 to take the rotor wire to cross the lesion with the rotor wire. That's why we are going to take a normal coronary art, normal PCI wire, and we are going to change it over the, over the micro catheter. This micro catheter, we are going to change our wire to, to the rotor wire. And that's after that, we are start to have a rotational attraction. Look to this. This is a packing, packing sense movement. One of the important points that during the procedure all the time, please keep your eye on the tip of your guide catheter and on the tip of the wire because the rotor wire is very nasty wire. It may travel everywhere. And if your guide catheter is, is, is not engaged very well, some, it might, you may ablate the ostium of the left main stem will cause dissection of the left main stem. The same story is true for the ostium of the right coronary arse. And later, we are going behind. Look to the wire head in the first, look how it's going. It's very nasty wire. And after that, just making a balloon and ordinary stenting. And later, we put a stent across the left main stem pot. And finally, this is the final result. So this tradition has been gone. There is no more use of, 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 of temporary pacemaker for, for, for left main stem or right coronary artery at rectum. Dr. Anders, still you are with me? Yes, with you. Okay. I think if, Another, if, you, yeah. if you go just for bare entrapment and uh, okay. so that we leave time for interaction. Okay, okay. <laughs> this is... If, if this is a very nasty complication. I, if this is a nightmare. Actually, burnt, bur, burnt entrapment is a nightmare. Fortunately, the incidence is, is very is uncommon. It's 0.5%. It's, it's a serious complication during the procedure and usually need surgical retrieval. Usually, we need a surgery 
to deprive surgical treatment to relieve the, the, the second bone. The mechanism, we have two mechanisms. This is very important. This is preventable. To me, the bone entrapment is preventable complication. Why? Because the mechanism is so, so clear. A small bar can be advanced beyond the heavily calcified plug before sufficient ablation, especially when the bar is pushed firmly at the high rotational speed. What does by this mean? If you have got the vessel at three millimeter or 3.5 millimeter, and you are going to choose a small bar like 125, before you are going to ablate the proximal calcification, if you have got a, a, a movement like that, a jerky movement, possibly we are going to cross the lesion. But later, it will be stuck. It will be stuck in the calcium junk. It will not be moved. So never try to take a smaller bird in the big vessel and to have a jerky movement because definitely it will cause the bird to be gone behind the junk of the calcium and you will be stuck there. Another mechanism is that the bird can be interrupted with a severely calcified long lesion, especially angulated and concomitant coronary spasm. Coronary spasm found to be some element, but when you have got angul angulated area, especially if the lesion is very long, this is one of the factors that making the incidence of the burn entrapment is, is, is larger. If excessive force is applied, stuck in the, the, the bird will be stuck in the lesion or across the lesion, but unable to be withdrawn. This is the way it happened. So the two mechanisms of bird entrapment is either you are going to take a small bird and you have got a jerky movement, you are going to cross the calcified area behind it, and later on it will be entrapped in the calcium joint, or sometimes you have got a very long calcified uh, banded area that make the, your system to be to be stuck. How it should be managed? Actually, the management, there are a lot of things to do, but I think that in vast majority of the, of the cases of the situation, surgical intervention is needed. The simple, simplest method is to retrieve the, the entrapped bird is pulling back the rotablator system manually. I remember one case in the beginning happened with me, we have a bar inter entrapment, but for, unfortunately, we lost the CD for that patient. But the reason was we have got some leak in the, in the gas tank, in the gas tank that is delivering the gas through to the, to the console, there was, there was some leak that make the system to stop and to shut down. And we lost the, the bar inside, it will entrapped it inside the calcium. At that time, I remember we, pull out all the system together while making this action. We have some dissection, but fortunately we were fortunate that we could cross the lesion again and we can stand the proximal part because still we haven't made a, rot a rotation atherectomy. So just we stand in the dissection and that we save the life of the patient. So the simplest way method is to withdraw all the system together outside the, the, the coronary artery. In some cases, it's mentioned that we say that you shouldn't exceed the, 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 the speed of the rotation to two to 100,000 uh, per minute. It's mentioned in some literature, you can increase the, the speed up to 200. This it might give some hope that with this increase in the rotation, it might move and it will, you can, we can take it out, take the, the, the system out. Another way is to cannulate is to cannulate the vessel with a second guide catheter. It means that we are going to take another guide catheter. Through the new guide catheter, we are going to try to take a wire, like if we look to the frame D, we're going to take another PCI wire, like here. And this PCI wire, we are going to, I guess, we are going to inflate a balloon. <clears throat> we are going to inflate the balloon just proximally to the stacked bar in hope that we are going to enlarge the proximal part of the, of the vessel, and at that time it may end with a peacefully and we can retract the bird. This is one of the methods have been mentioned and there are a lot of uh, case studies about that, a lot of uh, mentioned cases like that in the literatures. Use of snare. I think that this is just imagine. Yeah, I, just, I, I can't. I, I don't think that you have got a stuck bird inside this heavily calcified 
for coronary, coronary artery and to take a snare and to take it out. It's mentioned in the literature, but I don't, I, I think that it is, I'm sure, I'm not think, I'm sure that it is useless because imagine that how you can reach like this, this, this entrapped burr inside this heavily calcified this. Use of the vasodilator because sometimes there is some spasm. When you have got severe calcification and have got spasm on it, it might cause some, might cause the burn trauma. So in hope that you release the burr, it's better to give some sort of, of the vasodilator frequently if the blood pressure is allowed you. And there are a special technique is very long using a child catheter. You are going to take another catheter, we are going to cut the draft shaft of the of the of the of the of the rotor system, and you are going to take a guide catheter, catheter five French. It will act as a um, child catheter, child and mother, and you are trying to 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 pull the rotor system inside this mother catheter in hope that it will give you some force, like a guideline. It's the same same opinion or same mechanism of guideliner. How we are going to use guideliner is give us some support during the PCI for difficult case or we cannot cross a lesion or calcify a lesion. This is the same story as guideliner. We can deliver a five French guide catheter inside to be close as we can to the to the stack bar to the to the stack bar and we try to pull out the stick inside the catheter and to pull all the system together. And the final is surgery. I think that in vast majority of the cases, if we cannot take out or pull out the system altogether simply, I think that the, 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 the solution is surgery. That's why it's better to do rotational atherectomy in center in which uh, surgery is available. How to prevent birth entrapment? I have a lot of time, Dr. Amjad, or I think no. that- okay. yeah, I think we have to give time for the audience uh, questions. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll finish it shortly. Okay. I thought that's 9.30, it's 10. It's, mm. it's how to prevent it, just a gentle packing motion is very important. That's why I am repeating too much. Just to have packing motion, short run of rotation, less than 50 seconds. And when a smaller bar is employed, possibly it will cross it. It will give special phenomena like a case, which is the Chinese one. Just I'm going to bypass this because this is a complication rotor wire fracture, like the fracture of PCI wire. It cannot be, we are going to snare it, or sometimes we are going <clears throat> to, to, to cross it with, 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 with to cross it with the long stand to fix it with the wall of the of the prison. Uh, visual detection, same treatment. Uh, visual perforation, same treatment. We don't have anything special for that. If you allow me, Mr. Chema, I'm going to present this case, just 18 years old lady with the CC3 angina. She's diabetic. She's a heavy chronic smoker. If you look to this middle you have got a very tight critical lesion. At that time, syntax score for this patient was 35. It was at 32, intermediate risk. We have got uh, it, it about same the same for PCI and surgery, which was the piece doing rotablation. And if the lesion is very tight in the mid part, this is the one. The point is that during rotational atherectomy, we should focus on the guide catheter. Look to the tip of the guide is how it's well engaged, and the tip of the wire is very important. And this is the first line. In the second and third line, you should go beyond the calcified area. And this is the result after just ballooning and putting a stand there. And later to do just uh, FFR for the ostium of the circumflex, it was normal. That's why the stenting for the SF is deferred and this is the IVAS for that patient. Just to take home message, the, the, the use of rotational atherectomy have been found to about 5% in the high volume center. Just before this presentation, I was talking with Dr. Amjad and Dr. Hassan. I told them that the number is increasing. I don't know why, but I came across some literature and mentioned that the number is have fallen. Possibly this is because the uh, use of shockwave lithotropy, or I don't know, but in our centers, I'm sure that in all centers, the, the patient with calcified lesion is, is increasing. I don't know why, what's the reason? The indication is very important. Using heavily calcified complex PCI, 
for appropriate stain apposition. So it should be only used for calcified lesion. Requirements, require skilled operator, use the device properly and manage its complication efficiently. You should be familiar with the complication, how to deal with complication, and unless you will be lost in the cat lab. And at the time you will swear that you will never touch the device again. The complication, slow flow, and flow are frequent, frequently seen complication, and then can, can be managed easily. MACE, we say that all the trial have shown that the, the router blader will doesn't have any effect on the MACE, just it will ease your procedure and make the success rate of your procedure high. IVAS and, uh, and, o, IVAS and OCT may be useful in for determine the feature of the plug. However, I'm not using them a lot. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aram. The presentation was uh, comprehensive with very nice cases. Uh, you mentioned the three elements of the starting the program uh, of rot rotational atherectomy. And uh, the most important is being enthusiastic. And I remember how enthusiastic you were during uh, the initial uh, attempts to do rotablation. Thank you. Uh, so if you go to the audience interaction, there are some questions. Uh, Juad Hawass was asking about the uh, optimal duration of temporary pacing. I think you answered that question that uh, temporary pacing is no more used or is used less than before. Uh, but uh, as an advice, I think anyone who is going to start a uh, rotational atherectomy should use temporary pacing for dominant uh, circumflex, for left main stem, or for right coronary artery. Uh, we had, uh, I think, two to three cases that got uh, art block, and with that, without the temporary pacing, uh, we may have some emergency situation in the cat class. Although now they say that if you use frequent atropine during bradycardia, you will not need the temporary pacing, as we said. So there is no optimal duration for such a thing. It, it depends how long the patient will stay in uh, heart block. Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hassan is asking about the rotablation in calcified left main stem. Do you have anything to about that? Yeah, actually, it is. It's, it's one of the good solution for for calcified left main stem because you know that if you have got heavy calcification of the left main stem without the use of rotational atherectomy or debulking or shockwave lithotripsy, at that time you will never get full expansion of the stent. In this case, it is it is different totally. If we are dealing with the ostium, or we are dealing with the mid shaft or with the bifurcation, the most difficult scenario for that is the ostium. If you have got heavily calcified ostium, because as we mentioned there, when you have got, when you are going to do rotor later, you should have a good support. You should have a good backup support. It's very difficult to use to do rotablation for ostium of the left stem because if you are not very cautious, you might dissect all the left main stem. The trick, trick there is that you should prepare yourself by your team for, for, for some unwanted uh, complication. And the most important thing that you shouldn't engage the guide catheter and you shouldn't be away, away, too much away from the ostium because you should debulk or do plug modification for the ostium unless you cannot put a stent. Another important thing that you all the time, your eyes, as I mentioned, for all the procedures, especially for the ostium or the left, your eyes all the time should be on the tip on the guide catheter and in the bottom of the wire. I don't know whether you have got any other trick, Dr. Amjad, regarding the uh, atherectomy for the ostium left main stem. Uh, in general, uh, it's, one should be cautious for uh, rotablation in the left main stem. It's because that uh, the incidence, if, if you got nori flow when you do left main stem rotablation, then the, the result might be catastrophic because you are involved in all the left ventricles. 
Regarding the osteum, I agree with you, whether in the right coronary artery or, or whether in the left meniscus, uh, you should have a good alignment to do uh, the ablation. Uh, some points uh, I think to be raised about the gas tank, the nitrogen, we, we use the nitrogen tank as you use it also in Islamani. Uh, in the excellent center in Europe actually is uh, more cost effective to use air compressor. And the air compressor there uh, is uh, involved or uh, let's say it's with the, within the CATLA. احنا yes. بالنسبه لنا ما فضلنا هذا الشيء بسبب الالكتريسيتي بروبلم يعني yes. اذا بتستعمل الاير كومبرسر وصفه الكهرباء وصارت اي بروبلم بي لذلك فضلنا الغاز تانك لانه ما عندك مشكله المهم تتاكد انه الغاز تانك از فيلد وذ نايتروجين اوكي؟ يس ذاتس رايت ريجاردينغ ذا واير اوف ذا وان ويذر اكسترا سبورت اور ذا فلوبي واير Uh, as you said, it is a special wire. It is actually a stainless steel wire, and that's it. Not the conventional wire that you have the core and yes. the cover, and you have yes. different types of wire. And this stainless steel wire is difficult to manipulate, uh, and you should never should be cautious that you will not cause any kink in this wire. Because if any, if you do any kink, then you cannot advance the rotational, uh, the, the bear itself. Uh, I ask you about uh, rotational atherectomy for bifurcational lesion. Do you have any notes about that? Yeah, this is a very good question for the rotational atherectomy for the bifurcational because when we are doing ordinary conventional PCI for bifurcation, definitely you have got two wire in the mother and the side branch. But when you are doing rotational atherectomy, we should have only one wire. There is no any role, there is no any place to put another wire, PCI wire in the, in the, in the side branch. So at that time, you should prepare yourself. You are going to choose the most important one. For instance, if you are working on the LED and diagonal, definitely we are going to do the bulking for, 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 for all plaque modification for the LED. But it depends on the size, it depends size. If, 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 if it is Medina, for instance, if you have got the lesion bifurcation, it is Medina 001. You can do ablation for both. Preference, we are going to do ablation for the main bezel. And later, if you think that the bezel is too big, the side branch, you can withdraw the wire of the, of the rotor wire and to put in the side branch and to do the same with the small burst size. But in the vast majority of the cases, you should put in your mind that you are going to sacrifice, you are going to sacrifice the side branch. However, to be honest, it haven't happened with me. Like the case I show you, it was heavy calcified, but you should put in your mind that after putting a stent in the main vessel, it might be very difficult to recross or to cross because there is no wire during atherectomy. It's very difficult to cross the side branch because you have got a stand there and you got a junk of calcium that have been moving during the rotational atherectomy. So it depends. It depends on the on the size. But I think that so, so it depends on the case. Yes, the principle so, you should so keep only one wire. One wire because the, the bear can damage uh, the, the second Definitely. wire. Definitely. Yeah. That's that's the, uh, the, the, uh, the that's the main issue. Yes, that's right. What what if you have a circumferential calcification? The same uh, three hundred sixty. <laughs> this, this is a very bad bad selection for the cases. But sometimes, yeah. like the case that I have shown you, definitely, definitely, no way. If you have got a circumferential three hundred sixty degree, you will have some waste in the in the in the in the some part of the stent. Because if you if you if you think it in the in the in the in the reality, where this calcium will go, where this junk is going, so you'll get some sort of 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 uh, stand malalignment or disalignment. So that's why yeah. in these cases, and I don't know whether you agree with me, I am going to choose a a bit, a bit bigger. I, my, my, personally, I'm 
to the, with the side of taking the ratio of 0 0.5 to 1, not 0 0.6 to 1. But in these cases, I'm going to be 0 0.6, 0 0.6, something like that to the to the 1 ratio. I'm going to choose a bit bigger just to make more plug modification. But this is one of the worst, more worst scenario that definitely the result will not be so good. You have yes. will never get a good good ex, ex, expansion of the stent. My, yes, my advice: if you have a circular calcium, never do rotational atherectomy yes. because the, yeah. you'll you'll never dilate the lesion. And I no. think this is the perfect case for shockwave lithotripsy. Yeah. Uh, That's when true. you have a circumflex circumferential calcium. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, Dr. Hassan Garbawi is asking about no reflow and the treatment. I think you answered that. Uh, Dr. Sahib al Vahir is asking about the difference between uh, rotablation and dinaglide. I will answer that question. I think okay. he, he knows that, but just for uh, teaching purposes, uh, ro uh, when you do rotational atherectomy, when you do the procedure on the vessel, uh, you go for what is called rotablation and the it, the difference is in the speed of the bear so when you ablate you want you go to a speed of 160,000 rounds per minute the dynaglide is a low rotational speed around 60,000 be uh, around per minute just to advance the bear in difficult uh, curve across uh, the the guiding catheter uh, he Yes, he is asking another question uh, that during treatment, that is rotablation, do you have any test or mechanism to make you aware that you pass the lesion and your run was successful? Uh, actually, I don't know to have a test or no, but there is some entity, if he's talking about that, when you have both the fracture of the wire, if you have got the fracture of the wire, of the rotor wire, sometimes it may happen, your, your burr will be deviated de 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 to, the, to the side, will not be in its normal way. So at that time, you will, you will see that, that the, you, you, you lost the, the, the wire and it will be ruptured. But you cannot, sorry, it will be fractured. But if you mean that, if you mean that, can you give a cine? It's very to give a contrast because this device is the is 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 bulky and will never advise to give a contrast while the burr is inside so we all the time we are going to do ablation the bulking ablation taking pulling back the the burr inside the guide and at that time you can give some 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 test but you have the wire all the time your eye should be on the tip of the guide and on the bottom of the wire if the if the if the if the bird is coming along the wire, definitely by our side. You are inside, no way. But if it is delineated or, up, away from the wire, it means that you have got fracture wire. But never give a yeah, test. I, well, yeah, the I think bird he's is asking inside. whether you have crossed the lesion. I think the uh, the important thing is your feeling uh, yeah. and what you said, the pecking motion. So yeah. initially you will feel resistance, but once you ablate more and more you will yeah. find that the bird is going easily. And this is, this is, this, here comes the importance of, of what is called the final polishing, uh, yes. it's polishing run, that in that case, the bird go in and out very easily without any reduction in the rotational speed. Just to add to, add to you, Dr. Amjad, when you have yeah. got this calcified lesion, there is a lot of calcification on the screen. And as if you have got a roadmap, even you don't need to have to have a contrast to see whether you cross the lesion or not, because it is so clear to your eyes. You can see the calcification on floral, on sinew on floral. We are going to push it. You you can see it with all the contrast that have you crossed the calcified area because the calcification is so clear on the on the on the on the, on the floral fluoroscopy. Yeah, Doctor Ahmed Adib, I think he is asking an important question: Is that are you always going to uh, do rotablation planned or do it, yeah, and it uh, I think uh, as a bellotto procedure? Elegant question. Very elegant. It's a very important question. Definitely, yes. The same story for left man stem, the same story for CPO. Never try to do rotablation in an ad hoc procedure. 
unless you are in emergency. And I don't think that, I don't know what the, what's, what the, the Dr. Amjad is saying, that there is no any emergency case for, for rotational atherectomy. So all the time, plan, plan the procedure. No, I think he doesn't mean that emergency. Uh, I know, uh, ad hoc. I mean that it, there is no any role for, for, for ad hoc rotational atherectomy because you should explain for the patient you should take consent cons 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 from the patient and the family, and you should explain for them that we will do the procedure on expense on complication. It will affect the complication. It will increase your complication. But, but I will never do it at ad hoc procedure. The Let same story. Let me put it in another way. Let me put yeah. it in another, another way. So if you are going to do, uh, you have, you have a, a procedure, simple procedure of PCI, you go past by the balloon, you dilate and you don't like the result. So you have not planned the, uh, initially to do rotational atherectomy, but you find that the, the lesion is not dilatable. Yes. Personally, I will postpone it. I'll going to talk with the family. I will never do it as a, in the same procedure, no. Just to even to give the impression to the patient that there is some problem is, is he might change his mind because that time one of the solution will be, will be, will be bypass surgery. You should explain for the patient one one choice is bypass surgery. So personally, I haven't made any case yes, made okay. any case at all. So I let will me never give you my, my my experience. I think uh, you, you are right when you're talking about the cost and working in the private hospital. But here, uh, when when we have a non dilatable dilatable lesion, uh, and uh, we can talk on the table to the patient that we can continue the procedure using that and this. But now comes the problem in a non-dilatable lesion or the lesion that do, do not expand fully is what bear size are you going to use? Initially, you can use a small bears, but if the lesion is not dilatable, then you have to use, I think, a larger bear. And the larger bear, then you have to change the guiding catheter. So there are some complexities when you do rotational atherectomy after balloon dilatation. And it's... Uh, it's wiser or maybe it's easier and makes the procedure easier when you start with rotational atherectomy before balloon dilatation. Yes. Dr. Tahsin Kinani is asking if you have any experience with the rotablation of the previously implanted stent. Uh, and is asking that question too. If, if he's asking about personal experience, actually I don't have because in the indication is mentioned that it is contraindicated. However, however, I came across some literature talking about gene rotational therapy for implanting stem with the different uh, mechanism, different movement, because you know that these stem will be epithelialized, epithelialized after a period of time. And there are some cases, some report cases, but personally I don't have any experience with that. I don't know whether Dr. Amjad have any experience with that, with the ISR. Mm. I wouldn't dare for the time being to do that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think uh, now we have... Dr. Amjad, I have a question if you allowed me. Yes, okay. Just a bending question. Thank you, Dr. Aram and Dr. Amjad for a very nice uh, interactive session. Dr. Aram, I think you did mention that we can use uh, this technology for uh, transradial approach. Yes, definitely. Because okay. the bird, bird 1.2.5 and 1.5 can, can go easy through, through the uh, Skis French guide catheter. So, yeah, but if you are going to plan to have 1.75, it's better to have from femoral with a seven French guide cut. But it's definitely, yeah. And vast Thank majority you. of the cases can be done within 125, 15. So you can see that 90% of cases of the rotational atherectomy can be done through radial artery, through the sheet skis fringe and the guide cut thoracic fringe. Yes, it can be. Thank you. The other question, uh, is there any role for the IVAS or OCT for optimizing the use of uh, rotational atherectomy? Just like in the case of uh, 30 second uh, degree uh, uh, calcification or any uh, role for that? Mm, the same role for, for ordinary PCI. If you want to uh, optimize your result, uh, if you're sure that your result is good, it's the same indication. There are no special indications. It's the same as, as ordinary PCI. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Hassan. I think we have uh, passed uh, the time, uh, our time, and we would like uh, to thank uh, 
Dr. Uh, Ara, Aram Jamal Mirza for his uh, presentation and his time. Dr. Hassan, Sad Hassan for uh, being with us and uh, Asino for uh, preparing this uh, uh, web, webinar. Ungulkum Thimalao, Bissalamo, Jimmy, inshallah, Salmin. For your nice uh, uh, notes and uh, moderator led session. Shukran Dr. Aram, Shukran Asino. Inshallah, the Sbu al Qadam had the Alakut coronary syndrome will antiplate let be in the Shukran al Kum Jamian, Swan al Akhir, Mutanin, Dr. Amjad, Dr. Aram, Kulu Zumala, Wilho, Lesati, the Lihadra Viana, or Shukran Jazilan al Kum. Niltaka al Khair will Mahabo Salam be in the Enjoy your time. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.